Good afternoon and welcome to the afternoon show of BCB Live. This is the producer here hanging out with you guys and here for another thankful Friday as Buckle Up Bob put it this morning. Uh, I just want to welcome everybody to the show and thank you for hopping on and being a part of it. Now we got a lot of things going on in terms of safety. I know we got some great videos coming up a little bit later. Uh, one in particular that I think can really get some good discussion going that we talked about a bit this morning, but I wanted to start off with a few other things uh, related a bit to safety, one of which being the awareness that we have out there on the highways, especially whenever there are emergency vehicles out, right? So if anybody here is from Texas, uh, which I'm sure a lot of us are, and even if you're not, I'm sure you can understand this situation. So out here in Denton, Texas, earlier this morning, some first responders were going up to some construction workers uh, and helping them out. So there was actually video um, of this nighttime crew over here on I-35 that ended up a little bit worse uh, than it could have. So I was unable to get the video for this, but basically what happened was a uh, tractor trailer comes up and uh, up on the left-hand side of the emergency vehicles, which is fire department, as well as uh, some construction workers. And cuts off into or in front of the two emergency vehicles causing sparks everywhere flips the tractor and rolls over onto the shoulder there uh, you can see it a bit here on the bottom uh, like I said I was unable to get the video for this as it is kind of hidden behind a few things and wasn't able to download it but uh, the point still remains luckily luck was on their side and so um, luckily nobody was injured in this um, but the big rig did plow through two fire vehicles that were used to block that roadway. Um, so really, the end goal here is, uh, you know, it's it's about our job to protect the people out there on the highway. You know, give a give a break. Uh, I forget what the specific saying is. Um, something about giving a break or give us a break. I think was the whole thing. But um, the city of Denton has actually seen three emergency vehicles struck in the last 30 days. Um, in Denton County so really some crazy things going on and again it is the law at least it is Texas law um, for drivers to move over lane or slow down about 20 miles per hour the po below the posted speed limit when approaching emergency vehicles or other highway construction vehicles uh, especially uh, whenever they have those signs and lights up you definitely should be aware of that um, so Definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, I thought it was pretty shocking. Uh, if I'm able to find the video, I'll see if I can pull that up for you guys come Monday. However, uh, like I said, I was unable to do that. Um, now, we are seeing some more uh, pretty crazy things going on. I know Bob has talked a bit about the fires out in the West, um, and we continue to make mention of it every single year as California and a lot of that West Coast does uh, garner a lot of fire throughout this time we are in a dry and windy time of year and because of that we're actually seeing record fires right now so the Dixie fire uh, I believe is what it was called the Dixie fire has now grown to be the third largest in state history and has been burning for the past few weeks mostly in remote wildland areas with very few people however it did roar through the little mountain community of Greenville as it was driven by shifting winds and bone dry vegetation. Uh, this was the home for many people for many, many years, and now the town has been put into ashes. Uh, this hot, dry, and gusty weather really drove the fire through this gold rush era community of about 1,000 or so citizens. Uh, the blaze incinerated much of the downtown, that included many wooden buildings that were up to a century old. Uh, now, the winds are expected to calm down as the weekend continues, at least in that specific area. So hopefully this will cut back on that. Uh, but it's not going to change too, too much on the outcome. Um, so the direction of the wind and the ferocity of it is going to calm down. But with the fire only being 35% contained as of this morning, it now spans an area of 676 square miles. Uh, no injuries or deaths have been reported, but the fire does still continue to threaten more than 10,000 homes. So definitely be careful out there. I know that we make mention of it and we uh, make sure you guys uh, are aware of what's going on. But I think it's important to just kind of keep an eye on these things. Uh, even here in 
Texas in the Dallas-Fort Worth area in Mansfield. Um, this, the air is hazier now uh, because of these constant wildfires. And we've had a, an orange advisory for the past, I want to say, almost a month now because of the amount of smog and ash that we're seeing in the air right now. Uh, this is something that we sometimes deal with. However, this year's fire season rivals the one that we were seeing last year and therefore is affecting a lot of the United States. Of course, the closer you get to the west, the more likely you are to see that ash affect your visibility. So you, if you are running into something like that, you see a cloud of smoke and it's hindering your view, pull over, let us know where you're at, and uh, get with your DM and we'll figure it out because we'd much rather you guys be safe than running into a fire. Uh, the firefighting is for the firefighters. Unfortunately, I don't think any of our tractor trailers have, uh, have fire hoses on them. So maybe a good idea to stay out of that. However, if you are a motorcyclist, if you are hopping on that hog and wanting to go across America, Sturgis is back on track. That is right, everybody. South Dakota's Sturgis Rally is roaring back this year. Uh, organizers are expecting at least 700,000 people during this 10-day event. Uh, it did start yesterday, or yesterday was the eve of the opening. So today, I believe, is whenever it's actually starting. Um, somebody can definitely correct me on that, as I am not a motorcyclist. Uh, but it is starting up. Uh, downtown Sturgis was actually already clogged with many, many uh, motorcyclists out there on the road. So be careful and be cognizant of that. There's going to be a lot of people out on these roads, lots of people on motorcycles. So just double check your mirrors. You know, you never know what's going to be happening there. So it's always good to be aware of that as it is going to be going on uh, for 10 days. This is the 81st iteration of the event. Um, so it's still considered the 81st and not the 80th as some people did still attend last year in the heat of COVID. Uh, but again, just keep an eye out. Uh, share that road with everybody else who's going to be out there as you know, everybody wants to make it home, and these guys are just trying to ride a little bit. These guys and gals just want to ride. So give them that space, let them in, and uh, have fun out there. Give them, give them a honk, give them a, give them a ten four or not a ten four, whatever you would say. So <laughs> this this was a bigger topic. I'd say probably about five six months ago. Uh, I I want to say closer to the winter months or even last year during the summer. Uh, but spotted lanternflies have become uh, quite a big deal as of 2014 since they made their way into the United States as an invasive species. So for the first time since its discovery here in the United States, uh, it has actually entered Rhode Island. So this invasive insect that obviously can cause damage to not only trees and crops, but also the tractor trailers that we drive, um, has been found in Rhode Island for the first time, according to a state environmental official uh, this morning. The single spotted lanternfly was found in an area in Warwick near Jefferson Boulevard, uh, according to the Department of Environmental Management. And a photo of the insect was sent to the agency confirming the sighting that somebody else had reported earlier on in the week. Now, there's currently no known population of the insect present in the state, However, the agency is going to conduct a survey of the area where it was found in order to make sure that it's not nested up and created a uh, bigger home for itself than it is necessarily welcome for. The insect, which is native to Asia, feeds on agricultural crops like grapes, apples, hops, as well as maple, walnut, and willow trees. It also can deal damage to certain rubber parts, I believe, yeah, and correct me if I'm wrong there. Uh, but I believe it's rubber portions of the truck that can be affected by that. Um, so as of right now, there's more than 800 acres of agricultural lands, including vineyards, orchards, and berry farms in Rhode Island that are at risk with being infect infested by spotted lanternflies. So it's kind of crucial that we uh, take the necessary steps, at least I say we in a general sense. We, as in the environmental agencies up there, take that step so that we don't see a bigger supply shortage in some of those things. Um, I know that while we're maybe not having the biggest supply shortage in terms of berries, fruits, uh, at least not domestic fruits, um, if this gets out of hand, it does become a problem for a lot of other industries here. Um, 
like I said earlier, I'm pretty sure that it grabs the truck. Um, let me look that up really quick. But regardless, it prevents a lot of industries from being able to do things effectively, uh, using pesticides that they may not need to be using, uh, ultimately more money, more regulation and things like that. So we'll see how this turns out. But uh, if you guys have seen these anywhere, which I'm sure you have, uh, we've gotten plenty of pictures from everybody over the course of the time here. But this is again what that spotted lantern fly looks like. And it's pretty common up there in the north, uh, particularly New Jersey, Maryland, Delaware, Virginia. Um, and then certain individual finds up in New York, Connecticut, and Massachusetts. So be on the lookout for those um, and be sure to report those whenever you can. It's important to keep an eye on where they're moving and what's kind of happening with the spotted lantern flies due to um, just keeping them under control and keeping them within, within bounds. So I don't know if anybody else has been watching the Olympics lately, which I'm sure you have. Uh, we are kind of coming to a close it seems like now, um, but it's been a great few games. We're actually only a few months away from Beijing 2022, uh, where we're going to be doing the Winter Olympics here coming up not too far away. So I'm also getting pretty excited for that. Um, but we are going to see the end of that coming up here on August 8th. But we've seen many, many uh, new things. This These games, I believe the uh, U.S. Olympian um, Allison Felix is actually making history as getting the most um, the most medals of any woman in the U.S. track and field in history. Uh, it actually ties her with Carl Lewis, who has the overall Olympic record, and recently passed Merlane Odie for most medals in women's track and field. Um, we also have some pretty heavy dominance on the Team USA in volleyball, which surprised me. Um, I did catch a few of those games uh, early on in in the, in the games. Uh, but the team that we put out for the U.S. was actually a ragtag team and thrown together at the last minute. And we did not actually have those partners together until, I believe, like a couple weeks before the game started. And they still ended up going out and, I believe, placing gold or silver. Um, so really, really Great showings uh, by the U.S. right now. I believe we are in the lead right now with 98 total medals. Uh, we are in second place with gold with 31. Uh, first place with silver in 36. And first place with bronze in 31 as well. So some great standings here. And I'm hoping that we can carry that momentum over into the Winter Olympics. But I know you guys are more interested in hearing about some money that's being given away today because it is Friday. That means we do have that freeze that pays. So we're going to look around here. We're going to spin that wheel and we're going to land on somebody here to get that phrase that pays. And Alan Hennessy, do you know that phrase that pays? Can you hop on and let me know what you got here? If you're in a position, you should be, a, um, you can always type it out into the chat for me, Alan. If you do not have a microphone, I'll give you a little bit of time to do that. And there you go. I'll read it out loud because that is exactly right, Mr. Allen. You've got it. So be aware of your situation to avoid all hazardous temptation. Allen Hennessy, that that has to be the quickest phrase that pays we've had the, <laughs> in probably weeks. Uh, I want to say months. Okay, let me write your name down right now, Allen. Um, I would ask you what that means to you, but obviously you don't got your microphone. But yeah, that was... Kind of impressive. I was honestly hoping to buy a little bit more time with that. But yeah, congratulations, Alan. Uh, we've got some money for you here, and you will be getting that come your next check. But uh, thank you guys again for what you do. We really appreciate you. And uh, be safe out there. Keep an eye out. And with that, we'll go back to a few messages before getting into a little bit of safety here on BCB Live. I was out on the highway. It's love of my job. Feeling blessed with the presence. Buckle up, high. After this run, I'll get home to the ones that I love. Drive safe, Dave. He's got the passion to get the job done. the news and sharing their views solid as brick here comes Sarah 
you've been safe strong. Oh yeah. Thank you, sir. I don't. You know, awesome. Awesome, right? Hey, good afternoon. Welcome live from Hawaii. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I uh, wish. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Producer, you need to work on Rick. We're going to do a remote from Hawaii. Right, there okay, we go. buddy? I, or actually, I don't care. It can be Florida. Anywhere there's a beach, we're going to do it live from the beach. Hey, I'll what's see what your I can opinion do. of truck drivers and truck driving safety? Right? We'll hey, do be careful. Question. He'll send us to Minnesota and put us yeah. on some remote island out there. <laughs> a remote island in Minnesota? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That the, I don't go, know that. go to northern Minnesota sometimes. Some well, there may be a hill in the middle of a lake, but I don't know that it's going to be all that remote. Uh, that's funny. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the afternoon show. I am Buckle Up Bob, and my cohort here is Stale Dale today. Heck Stale yeah. Green Dale. And we have the producer who's starting to look normal again after his girlfriend gave him that shiner the other day. <laughs> well, we're still up to bait on that, whether it was the girlfriend or a rubber floaty. <laughs> Either way, it's not good for him. <laughs> it was uh, it was her head that hit me. It was definitely not the floaty. Let me clear uh, that up ahead I of time. I think the floaty was trying to run interference, and <laughs> you still got hurt. <laughs> uh, hey, we've been talking all week about school safety, right? And we focused on the buses, some rules that many didn't know, uh, you know, including myself. And then yeah. today, uh, just some student uh, driving, uh, you know, numbers, if you will, that are just really alarming when we're, you know, our whole future, you know, this is true. Uh, whether anybody wants to argue it or not, I don't care. But our future rides with the young population, right? We have to teach them the safety. We have to teach them the responsibility. Otherwise, we get the politicians we get, right, <laughs> over the years. And so I, I, I generalize that so you can't pick any affiliation because anymore it just seems like uh, sides. they're all bad or if you get to it anymore. And actually, I shouldn't say they're all bad. I just think we've lost our focus where they're no longer for the people, they're for themselves, and mm -hmm. that's the problem. But I digress. But again, some of the statistics, you know, accidents are the leading cause of death among teens ages 15 to 19. You know, that's alarming when that's the number one cause. Uh, the risk of the fat fatal crashes with teenagers doubles when there's passengers in the car. They're not equipped yet. I think a lot of it has to do with maturity. You know, it's not a, a blanket that covers everything, but we know, uh, myself included, my wife swears I didn't start growing up till I almost turned 40, and then it was debatable. So, again, some of us mature at a later rate than others. And so I do think there's that maturity level where they just don't grasp the consequences of what might happen, the what ifs out there. They don't think about it. Um, and, you know, I don't think it's limited to teenagers. We've heard some comments yeah. from drivers, you know, that have learned over the years that they also had some of those same uh, ideologies, if you will, uh, that you just don't grasp the gravity of it. Um, and then 32.8 percent of all high school students have admitted that they uh, text while they're driving, right? And that makes the yeah. drivers under the age 20 that makes them the highest percentage of distracted drivers in the country, and that is just alarming there because we know, you know. It is our, the BCBs of safety uh, kind of conclude the fact that every accident is a form of distracted driving. And, and what we mean by that is, you know, there's distractions you don't think about. Whenever anybody says distraction, and even here, they're talking about the cell phone, right? Texting or talking. Um, but there are so many more distractions. Fatigue is a distraction, right? If you're fatigued, your mind is focused on other things than your safe driving. You're worried about how to stay awake, maybe. You're worried about, can I make it here? Can I make? And you're just totally not focused on what's going on. Uh, and then, even worse, is 70% of young uh, drivers are involved in drinking and driving accidents, and they don't wear a seatbelt. You know, again, it's just one of those things where, you know, I've had a mother-in-law that argued with me about seatbelts don't save lives, you know. And, well, if I was in this accident, it would have, I would have been dead. Well, you don't know that because you weren't wearing a seatbelt. All we know is you were lucky. But here, the numbers, there is, there is nothing that guarantees you from uh, dying in a car accident. But the clear, the clear numbers are slower speed, wearing a seatbelt greatly improves your odds of surviving that accident. There's no, I don't even think anybody that, 
don't believe in seatbelts can argue the fact that the numbers are there and they're not being made up. And then 33% of young drivers killed in accidents due to drinking and driving had a blood alcohol content of 0.01 or higher. In most states, it is 0.008. I don't know if that's every state. I think there's a few of them that might even have the 0.01. But typically, all state, most of the states in this country have a 0.008 tolerance. And for those of you that are wondering, that's two beers an hour, folks. And so uh, we had the question this morning that the producer knew, thought it was a trick question, and trusted his gut. It wasn't really a trick question. It was just a fact. But uh, the alcohol content, you know, if you're wondering... How much? What has more alcohol content? A shot of whiskey, seven ounces of wine, or a 12-ounce bottle of beer? And the answer is they all have the equal amount. The thing is you will drink wine and uh, sh whiskey quicker. And so uh, it will get you drunker faster, but it has no more, not because it has a higher uh, alcohol content. Typically, they are the same. And, of course, there's exceptions. You know, you have... 180 proof, you know, and I'm, <laughs> you know, Twitter stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I get that, but typically on the generic yeah. side of it, most of the brands are the same amount, give or take, and you got to pay for that 180 yeah. proof or 200 <laughs> proof. Um, so again, hey, talk to the, uh, the purpose of this is make sure you're talking to them. Don't shy away from this because again, you know, the tough conversations are the ones that save lives. You know, uh, this week, I'd say a couple instances, we've had some tough conversations. And it's, yep. and when I say tough, it doesn't have to be argumentative. It just means there's a difference of opinion, and that's fine. Uh, at the end of the day, what we want is our drivers thinking about safety and talking about it and coming up with their safety. Because we know that if they're thinking about it, even if they disagree, they're still thinking about it, they're going to be a safer yep. driver out there. Yep. You know, and I had a call talk with a driver today that was in a couple of the tailgating videos, you know, I'm out here doing the best I can. I said, well, I need you to do it better, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because again, just like we said, we've got the phrases safe, safer, and safe as. And if you can't say what you're doing is the safest way, then it's probably not the right way, right? And the, But that is up to each individual to um, decipher that. And the good news is, y'all are doing a very oh. great job. With 80 days, we have reached the big 8-0 um, in days without a preventable accident. And that also goes uh, to our um, DOT reportables because the last preventable accident we had was a DOT reportable. So that 80 days is for both. And we have hit three weeks. Get out and look. We hit them on yeah. a Friday, which means we got to be focused on the weekend because that's when we seem to get a few of them in the past. But, you know, this year we're already in the eighth month, you know, so we've completed seven. And we've had, I believe there was... Uh, Two 40s, a 30, and a 68 in their days. So, again, you know, that's over half the year. So, you know, we've had very little streaks that have been under 30. I think we had one or two that ended before the 30-day mark. So, uh, next Friday, we'll be at 28 and pushing at 30 again and almost halfway to our record. Uh, so, again, keep up the good work. Yeah. Talk about safety amongst each other. Uh, we What I heard was encouraging was... Um, one of the topics we were talking about this week, the drivers started talking among six or eight of them themselves after the call. That is outstanding. Yeah, if you're talking safety, you're thinking safety, and it's going to, you know, and that's what I can't get through the drivers that don't get on the call. Oh, I don't need this. I don't, ah, blah, 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 right? But it's about talking about it that keeps you focused on it. You know, nobody gets in the truck and says, oh, have a wreck today. But you're also just not thinking about safety. Life happens. Some of you, it's hitting hard. Right. And so you're thinking about that instead of safety. And so by tuning in the show in the morning when you start, it helps get your mind back on what can save your life. And that's the safety topic. So we want to keep talking about it. Keep trying to get each other to tune in. And we're going to break for a little bit of a weather and we'll be right back after these words. Hey, welcome back, everybody. It is hot, hot, and again, it's hot. So uh, what we want to see is our current temps. And not as hot as yesterday, you might. We don't have the really dark maroon that we had here that was 115 uh, in the, and pushing 120s. 
So you can see, but we still, it's still hot in the same area. And just having a cold from, oh, I spoke too soon. Look at this. Is that real? 127 degrees here near Searchlight, Nevada. That's right along the river, ain't it? Or the Colorado? Wow, 128 degrees in here. Look at this dew point, 93. It's humid, too, with that. And who says that's a hot, dry air, right? That is not hot, or, or it's hot, but it's not a dry air. So, again, if you are, not that there's any highways going through there, but you want to stay away from Searchlight, uh, Nevada, it looks like. Uh, but, again, it's just really hot, folks. And you can see right there in that pocket, we're in the triple digits. But, wow, what a great, I mean, when you look at what we're used to uh, this time of year uh, in Texas, you know, I remember it was either my first or second year down here, uh, they tied or set the record of consecutive days in triple digits, you know, and that was around 8, 9, 2008, 2009. And I said, I, I learned the meaning real quick of what it says, if you don't like the weather in Texas, wait a minute, right? Because uh, in our first two years, we had floods. I mean, we had a retaining wall that was seven feet high in our backyard, and the water was a foot from cresting it. Um, we had uh, the consecutive days of uh, triple digits. And then one winter in the first two years, we got over 12 inches of snow in a 24-hour period, and it was gone two days later. And I'm like, welcome to Texas. So it is fun. I love the weather down here, but mostly many of you don't like it. I love the warmth. I love the heat. I can always cool down. What I can't do is I hate trying to warm up. So you northerners, keep your cold weather. We're going to stay nice and balmy down here in God's country in Texas, as they call it, right? Um, even a song, right? God bless Texas. So, again, uh, hey, it's hot, folks, but we don't have a whole lot of rain. You can see just some scattered showers along that east coast that we thought up there in Wyoming as well. So, again, you could be running in and out of some storms. Uh, so just slow down and be mindful of that, uh, you know. They're going to have some heavy downpours, and then it's going to lighten up probably pretty quick. Um, let's see what it does in motion if it grows. A lot of lightning in these, but you can see it's just not moving much. It's just sitting there in the last hour. So it's just sitting there dumping rain on you. Um, our winds, we're supposed to pick up this afternoon. Uh, let's look at the gusts. Not as big areas this morning, so it shrunk. It's mainly up here by the Salt Lake City. They're looking at potential. That didn't hit, right? What are you doing to me here? There it is. 50 mile an hour gust. Our current winds in that area. There we go. There's the yellow. Let's see here what we got. So here's a 25 mile an hour wind. 50 mile an hour gust. Okay. So we do have the 50 mile an hour gust currently. These are current winds, okay? You can see 25 uh, sustained with gusting of 50 miles up there right running into a uh, a little east of Salt Lake City. So if you're up there in that area, uh, you know, get off the road. I mean, 50 mile an hour gusts are too fast, are too big a gust. Uh, where is 70 that runs through here? I wish I could change that map, but I think it runs through Grand Junction, don't it? My drivers can help me if anybody raises their hand. Tell the producer, yes, Grand Junction runs through 70 because just north of that, there is a 35 with a 58 mile an hour gust. We're almost hitting 60s. Folks, 70 mile an hour gust is tornadoes. So, you know, in that low 70s, mid 70s. So we are right along straight line tornado, tornadic winds uh, out here in the Rockies. Again, I think this is 70 that comes out of Denver here and then loops down there in Grand Junction. I'm pretty sure uh, our drivers can help me. Um, let's see here, what else we got? Over here on this side, 46 mile an hour gust. Um, in uh, Eagle County Regional Airport. So it is windy west of Denver to Utah. Uh, we got a 30 up here in Wyoming near Walcott Junction, 40 mile an hour gusts coming out of Colorado Springs. Uh, not gusting, just windy. So on that 29, um, so as we said, it's gonna be really windy here. Use caution, make sure that you're off the road. If you're light, Get off the road if you're heavy. Got to be down around that 50 mile an hour per hour uh, speed if you want to move. So, you know, many of you say, well, I can't slow down that slow. Then that's your cue to get off the road, okay? If you can't do it, then that's quite all right with us. We want you safe. 
better than that than rolling over or, or losing a life. Um, our rain chances forecast again, not much going on, just kind of where we're seeing it, you know. And then as we go into tomorrow, we are going to see a potential uh, Washington, D.C. You're going to be looking at some very strong possible thunderstorms in the D.C. area tomorrow. The rest, just the standard uh, summertime thunderstorms. Again, these are forecasted areas. Doesn't mean it's going to rain right where they are, but in them areas, there's a high risk for some thunderstorm activity tomorrow. And our wind gust tomorrow, you can see it dies a little bit, but it moves into the Kansas and the Texas and Oklahoma panhandles, and the rest of the country is pretty mild. So, hey, everybody, slow down. Don't mess with this wind. Uh, earlier this year, I believe it was, we did have a rollover where the driver was going too fast, and a 58 mile an hour wind gust got him. So, you know, you've got to treat respect with this wind, okay? It's, it's better to live today and, and drive again tomorrow than to be laying over on your side and hopefully not injured, and then your truck's out of commission for a while. So that's our weather. Um, we're going to be right back with some videos for you all. All right, to perform a macro 39, you'll go to your mail screen, hit send, go to form, then you will scroll over until you find the 39 code. Fill out the particular information that's on the form, trailer number, tractor number, write the description of what's wrong, and then hit send. It's closed this weekend. Finally. Yeah, go ahead and reach out. Hey, we're back live. I thought he was counting down. <laughs> that's right. We're definitely live. Hello, we're sitting here talking. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Dale, what do you got for us on our videos? Uh, got some great videos to look at. And, and the first one is one that we can discuss, you know, what's the safest thing. We're on I-45 here. Uh, it's three lanes going each way. That vehicle is going the wrong direction on our, on our side of the road. Mm. You know, and so what's the safest way to handle this? You know, I, I would think it would be to slow it down as much as we can, get over to the side of the road as far as we can, maybe at an angle. Um, but that's just scary right there, and, and it does take a little bit to process it. You know, I had the luxury of looking at it three, four times and going, what the heck is going on? And then all of a sudden, yeah, it's definitely on our lane, you know, on our side of the road. So, you know, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but I, I would say, you know, we want to slow down. We want to scrub as much speed off as we can uh, and, and get as far off to the side of the road as we can, probably at an angle. Uh, that way it's not a head-on if, if the driver decides or, or is drunk and all of a sudden veers over. Yeah, we had a great discussion this morning on this, and it is a great um, great thing to think about. You know, when we count the clocks, you know, it's it's okay to look at the clock, and it was five seconds, but you really don't have five real seconds to process, you know, because your first, when you see it, like, is it in my is that on yeah. my side of the highway, or is that something weird? And then you, by the time you realize it, you've lost two to three seconds, so then you're down to two. Uh, but again, what I hope is, you know, one thing we didn't talk about, folks, is when this happens, yeah, you want to take the speed out of it as fast as you can. But once you're past this, you need to be calling 911 yeah. and getting uh, the police involved. Say, hey, there is a car speeding the wrong direction on the interstate, and there's the mile marker I'm at, whatnot. So police can be out there as quick as possible. There may be one up the road uh, that's going to be looking for this person and can get them off the road. Remember, we talk about protecting life in every decision. Well, the decision isn't enough just to protect yours. That's the first thing you do, by the way. Protect your life. Once your life is saved, let's protect everybody else by trying to get law enforcement involved and get this person off the road. All right, here, here's one with the heartbreak. You know, it's easy to get distracted. He's going over a bridge. It's easy to get distracted. A lot of stuff going on. But you got to be aware of that big, uh, big picture and see what's going on. Because if you watch the traffic to the right and to the left, we're both breaking before the center lane. We're, so you got to have an idea that something's going on. You know, we have plenty of great following distance here, which really allows for, you know, us to get stopped in time. And we do get stopped in time. But just, you know, stay focused, uh, minimize the distractions and be aware of what's going on around you. Yeah, hey, we talk of the Smith system, right? What's one of the keys of the Smith system? Leave yourself an out. When you're on a bridge over the Mississippi River, uh, there's no out but your lane. And so this is where speed and space is critical because your only out is to stop yeah. here because you can't go left, there's a Jersey barrier and oncoming traffic. You can't go right or you're gonna be taking a little swim, yeah. uh, potentially, right? And 
maybe not even swimming. Right, turn into more than floating. Yeah, and, uh, you, and you want to always make sure you leave yourself some distance between the car in front of you because if it's, you know, a car two or three up is traffic jam and, and can't get out and can't move, now you can't turn either without backing yes. up. So we don't right. want to back up on the road. No. Uh, <laughs> Uh, just, just a great job here again. You know, it, it was kind of a slow day. I shouldn't say slow day on the videos, but I mean, just had a lot of great videos of where we're going under the speed limit. We're running about 55 here, and I this over in Louisiana, so I'm sure it's at least 60. So we know we, we're underneath the speed limit. We've got great space management between us, and so just a lot of great things going on here. Nice job, our driver, uh, uh, just paying attention and doing all the things right. Yeah, and then. This one here is on I-35 up around Valley View, Texas. Um, you know, again, great awareness by our drivers. Got great speed and space management. We're way back. He's owning the space. He sees the brake lights come on ahead of him. He immediately starts to slow down and, and you know keep that space. And, and that's just a great example of one of the great things of the many things our drivers do the right way every day. Yep. Yeah, it looks like a zipper line at the beginning, but then it slows way down. Yep. Great job. I mean, that's what we're looking for, everybody. You know, we're going to have a video Monday. Uh, it happened early this morning. But, you know, just as a reminder, never, ever is it safe to do a U-turn on the highway, let alone a U-turn in an intersection. All right? Go down and turn around. Be safe. Particularly, the driver was awesome in the conversation, uh, admitted that, yeah, that was not the safest thing to do. There is no admission of guilt or right or wrong. It's just what we want to focus on, was that the safest option? And he said no. And he says, you know what? I know better, and yet it just the moment grabs you sometimes. Uh, and that's the thing you got to, well, if you keep talking, you keep practicing these good habits, right? Then that's, the moment won't grab you uh, like that where you're just, because you've entrenched in yourself not to do that. Uh, and so it's, it's just really hard to break bad habits, folks. But that's why we keep talking. So, again, remember, um, in a U-turn situation, I've only seen two outcomes. Nothing and bad. <laughs> but I've never seen nothing good, right? Yeah. Just because nothing happened doesn't mean it was good. But nothing ever good was gained by a U-turn. Only either you stay par or you, something bad. And, and them two options aren't worth it to me. If there's not even a chance of a good outcome, you know, an okay outcome and nothing happening is not a good outcome. That's just a bad decision that you were lucky. So, all right. Hey, everybody. We got any callers this afternoon, producer? Or did I make them all mad this morning? I hope they understood <laughs> that I am not mad when I... I am passionate She's about passionate. this. I, I, mean, you know, I am that's very it. passionate about this. And, I, and I, I'm just stuck in my beliefs, too. Yep. And again, but I'm only looking at the safest way. Maybe not the most practical or the most feasible at the time. And I love the driver that pointed that out. You know, hey, it may not be the I'm fastest looking at five either. seconds, but I didn't. You really don't have the five seconds, and that's an eye opener for me. So I got to be cognizant of that when we're talking about this. Hey, yeah, I see the clock says five seconds, but you know what? We really don't have that much time to react, and that's even scarier. Which also leads to why we have to have that speed and space down there. You know, you you talk about that five seconds. Going five miles under the speed limit buys you an extra two, maybe maybe even three, right? Uh, depending on what the speed limit is. So that's why we, when we talk about going under, it doesn't matter that the speed limit says 75. doesn't mean you have to do it, no, just right? If you can, doesn't Who we mean got? you should. Yeah, we got Alan Arnold. What do you got for us? Mr. Here? Arnold. Hey, Mr. Bob. <clears throat> hey, man, oh, man, this is a great thing to uh, put into practice right here, okay? Yes. You remember we were talking about Warner and yes. how that – vehicle come across the road and hit them, right? Yep. All right. So, and I and look, I, I'm not bashing on our driver. No. Okay. But let's put the scenarios into perspective and let's just see if we would be considered at fault. All right. If that car would have hit us, do we have everything in order all of our eyes dotted all of our t's crossed you, know, you see what i'm getting at yep i mean just for alert just for a teaching and learning aspect because we know what we know what uh can happen because we've seen it but 
we haven't put it into our own perspective of, hey, look, you didn't complete a uh, pre-trip long enough. It, you know, nitpick it to death like they would to get us to understand it even more. I mean, and, and it's not bashing the driver. It's using his, um, whatever you call Situation. it, misfortune right there. Yeah. Situation, thank you, sir, to teach us and show us exactly what we would be looking at in a court of law. And uh, the other thing is, I'm a size 2X, okay? <laughs> Just, I, don't have I still want that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, great points. And, and yeah, I think that's the hardest thing for me to get across is that because it comes off sometimes as insensitive and not listening or caring with the driver. That is furthest from the truth. Uh, many of you out there have gotten to know me over the years, and you know what an advocate I am for the driver. But just because I disagree doesn't mean I'm right, doesn't mean I'm wrong. What it means is I get to see article after article after article about these lawsuits. And, Alan, you, you are so right. Uh, as the Warner thing really put in perspective, you do you really want to roll that dice? And what they're going to look at, can they blame the driver in any way? In other words, did the driver do everything they could to avoid it? Doesn't matter whether this guy's on the wrong freaking highway, right? But did the driver, and that just helps the argument. Again, doesn't mean the driver's going to be convicted. But we've seen in the Warner case that, you know, it's, they're, they're, re, they're appealing it. But, I mean, it's still that possibility of being dragged out and putting everybody through that. And so what you're able to do in a court wall is say, yeah, we did everything. We knocked our speed down as soon as we got, here's the video. We were down to this, we slowed 30 miles an hour in in two seconds, right? We got to the shoulder and they still hit us, right? Um, So you're right, Alan, you gotta do everything. That's what we're talking about. Do everything, get your I's dotted, your T's crossed so that when the lawyers have to defend you in this and they will have to defend you, you've given them more ammunition to do so. You're not just throwing it up, well, I'm on my highway going the right direction, it's their fault, right? Uh, and that would include, believe it or not, if you're going five miles over the speed limit, they will try to use that against you. Who else we got there, producer? Yeah, Bobby Harris, what do you got for us? Bobby, Bobby. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, mm-hmm. sir. All right. I got a, a safety issue I want to bring to the board so everybody will be aware of it. Anytime a driver picks up a trailer and... He sees, he has to see it, a brake pad, airline, or anything like that, that's a hazard, that's a safety fissure, uh, official. And if he goes down the road, like a brake pad is too thin, it's already, it's, it's not even legal when he took off with it. If a driver moves that trailer down the road and he has an accident, God forbid somebody gets killed and the DLT actually does an inspection on the on the trailer, the tractor, trying to find something. And if he finds that brake or whatever the matter is, somebody's gonna go to jail and it's most likely gonna be the driver. That right there is a safety issue that I have actually come across mm-hmm. and reported it, but I would not pull the trailer down the road. The person that dropped that trailer off needs to be talked to, needs yeah. to be reprimanded or whatever whatever the matter is. But if they, they took that chance, took that trailer down the road, and if they had an accident, there were the, going to be some big lawsuits. I promise you, somebody's going to jail and it's most likely going to be the driver. Yep. All right, here's another uh, story I want to tell. Because people's not taking this uh, safety thing serious when it comes to uh, doing inspections on their on their equipment. All right. It's been years and years and years ago, back in the early 90s. I think it was JB or, or Snyder. When their trucks were mandatory, well, they they regulated their tractors at 55 miles per hour. They were over on uh, Interstate 94, I think it was, 
Somebody can correct me on that, but I think that's right. It was going east and west. Uh, they come into that 95 miles per hour speed zone. All right. A four-wheeler slammed into the end of the trailer because they couldn't go no faster than 55. All right. They ended up getting a lawsuit from the people that ran into the trailer, and the state told them their 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 vehicle needs to be matching the speed, or not be tied down, or they cannot come through that their state no more. And that I don't I don't know what happened, but one of those uh, JB or Snyder ended up getting their trucks raised back up and took away the governor. Now. That's what regulates the, the speed on the tractor, is the governor. All right. Once that happened, they were allowed to go back through that state. Thank you see you, what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, that's all I have to say. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, we've got to do inspections. Hey, it is a federal law. It is in the Federal Motor Carrier Book. And we went over this regulation um, just this past Wednesday. Right, producer? Um where, you know, you are never allowed to take non-compliant equipment on the highway. And, and Bobby, you're right. As I've shared several times in the past, was involved in a seminar with insurance companies, and they had a couple uh, accidents that had already been tried and, and whatnot, and the lawyers re, um, re-displayed it or reenacted it there uh, on, and on the podium there for the, the people that were at the seminar. And the three things that the lawyers get their hands on first is your logs, your maintenance records, and then the hiring process. And they're looking for only, these are the three areas that they are looking for neglect. And if, the, like you said, if the guy says he did a pre-trip and there was, it was proven that something failed that should have been caught on the pre-trip, you're going to jail. You're going to lose your license. The company's going to get sued, right? Um, if your um, logbook is false, then you, that's neglect on your part, and it's going to put you in jail, right? Uh, and, and then again, the hiring process comes back hey, on Bob. the company. So you're right on the hey, nose. Bob. Yes, sir. Hey, Bob, I failed, I failed to mention this since you said it. If you put on, that, on, the, on this uh, Qualcomm or driver tag, that you didn't find no uh, uh, any faults or anything, and if you know that that breaks down to the rivets on the brake pad, and you already got dug in grooves into the drum, that right there's gonna—I mean, that get you for false uh, logging. Yeah, that's they will never get you changing. on that too. Yeah, that's never changing. No. When you had paper, if you yeah. wrote no defects and there was a defect, then you were in trouble. Yep. Yep. That's falsifying yes, the document. Yes, sir. Yep. Thank you, Bobby. Who else we got, producer? Nobody on this Friday. Hey, Dale, you got anything that... Hey, uh, driver called in and said that I-70 is going to be closed westbound uh, through a key portion of Denver over the weekend, beginning at 10 o'clock tonight. Um, Colorado Department of Transportation, it will close from uh, I-70 from Interstate 270 to Colorado Boulevard. Um, it reopens again uh, 5 o'clock Monday morning. And so the recommended detour is uh, I-270 to Interstate 76 to Interstate 25 to come back up to 70. Um, I think this was going to happen a couple weeks ago, and they had to delay it, and yeah. so it's the same closure. But Ah, okay, and we had another one. Uh, there's a boulevard up there that's shorter, and it's only six miles out of route. You do not have to get all the way to the, uh, um, where was it, the... Uh, I-25 back onto I-70. That is one, but there, I forget the name of the boulevard off the top of my head, but we gave that out last week because, yes, it was supposed to be the same yeah. as last week, so I take it that didn't happen last week? No, this is the third time they've scheduled Unless they this didn't song. finish it, and now they're going to do it again. Uh, so, yeah, so, again, folks, that's what we talked about a couple. Dale, we'll get a, a fleet message out to them, if you would, yeah. uh, just kind of reminding them, hey, go up to the here or here, but, you know, just let your DM know. Uh, if you're going that way, and it, it it is only the westbound, the eastbound lane was yep. not uh, direction was not affected in this, and so it was on their map. It's on their website. So if you got any questions, pull it up if you're in that area. Great point. Hey everybody, 
man, we just want to thank each and every one of you uh, for a job well done. I mean, I know it's hard. I mean, you know, my favorite saying that I had, and maybe I need to bring it back out for one of these Thursdays that I found on a, a, a poster or whatever was, you know what? It's not getting easier. You're getting better. And as long as we can continue to talk openly and nobody get offended, uh, you know, and just keep talking about safety, that you will get better. I mean, you just have to, yeah. right? If you practice, if you study film, if you do anything that's going to better your craft, you're going to be better and you're going to be safer for it.